Assalamu alaikum viewers, welcome to virtual university. In many of the lessons on writing and even those on reading, we looked at how ideas are organized and put together in connected form within and between sentences. In today's lesson, we shall look at the way certain words like adverbs, which cause problems to learners of English are placed in the sentence. We are going to look at ways in which words are positioned or ordered in an English sentence and give you some practice in their use. The words are verb plus object, how they are used to show place and time, the position of words like also, always, probably, am, is, are. Then you've got another set of words like still, yet, anymore, any longer, no longer. The fourth set is although, yet, even though, in spite of, despite. And then we look at the word even exclusively, how even is used, uh, where does it uh, occur, where is the, its right place. And then we, can, we shall look at how as is used to show time and as is used to show reason. And in the end, we shall look at the way like and as are used in different ways. The first one is the, the use of verb and its object. In English, the verb and its object usually go together. Other words are not put between them. For example, in the sentence, I like animals very much. You will always have like followed by the object. Now, if you were to write or to say, I like very much animals, that would not be the correct place for very much. Very much has to come after the object. Another sentence, did you see Fahad yesterday? Shazia often plays tennis. Notice the verb comes first and then the object. Do you clean the house every fortnight? Uh, if you were to say, do you clean every fortnight the house? That would be wrong. It has to be, do you clean the house every fortnight? Not, do you clean every fortnight the house? Uh, another example. Everybody enjoyed the picnic very much. Now, if you were to say everybody enjoyed very much the picnic, that would be wrong because you have placed very much in the wrong position. Enjoyed is the verb, the picnic is the object and the object has to follow the verb. Everybody enjoyed the picnic and very much will come at the end. In the same way, you have a sentence where it says, the guide spoke French flu fluently. And sometimes learners of English, they place the, uh, the object in the wrong position. They might write, the guide spoke fluently French. Now that is wrong. The correct is the guide spoke French fluently. Another sentence, I not only lost all my money, I also lost my jewelry. Sometimes students turn around and write, I not only lost all my money, I lost also my jewelry. Now, uh, the use of also, the use of also after the verb lost is wrong. Also, the correct place is, I also lost my jewelry. 
not I lost also my jewelry. Another sentence, at the end of the road you will see a petrol pump on your left. Students, learners of English in the early stages, they tend to write at the un end of the road you will see on your left a petrol pump. In English, the place is mentioned before the time, right? The place comes before time, how often, how long, that is, that comes after the, after you've mentioned the place. Example, Huma walks to work every morning. It's the place that has to come first and the time when she walks, how often she walks, how long she walks, those facts have to follow after you've mentioned the place. So, don't write Huma walks every morning to work. The correct use is Huma walks to work every morning. Another example, their family has been in the United States since last year. Notice again, the place is mentioned first and then the time since last year, right? Another example, he arrived at the railway station early. The place is mentioned first, railway station, and then what time? Early. So, early has to follow the place. Do not write he arrived early at the railway station. It is the place that has to be mentioned first and the time and how often and or how long have to follow after the place. Another example, I am going to Sibi on Monday. Sibi is a place in, it's a, it's a city in Balochistan. I am going to Sibi on Monday. Now, if you were to say I am going on Monday to Sibi, that's not the right order. The right order is the place first and then the time. I am going to Sibi on Monday. Another one. Why weren't you at the party last night? Again, it's the place that is mentioned first, the party, and the time comes, the time has to follow the place. But as always, there are exceptions. And it is often possible to put the time at the beginning of the sentence. Well, this is typical. Uh, in languages, there are always exceptions. You can say, on Monday, I am going to Larkana. Larkana is a, is a big town in Sindh. On Monday, I am going to Larkana. Or, every morning, Huma walks to work. Now, notice that you cannot use the word early or the word late at the beginning of the sentence. Now, we will have a short practice and you decide whether the word order is right or wrong. Take the first sentence, Tony walks every morning to work. Is the word order right or wrong? Of course, it is wrong. Number two, Maha speaks very well French. No, Maha speaks French very well. French has to come first and then how well she speaks has to follow it. So, sentence number two is also wrong. The word order is wrong. Number three, after eating quickly my breakfast, I went out. Is the word order in that sentence right or wrong? It is wrong. Number four, I'll, I think I'll early, I'll go early to bed. Again, same violation. The place has to be mentioned before the time. I think I'll go to bed early. The word order is wrong over there. Number five, 
Did you do interesting things at work today? Did you do interesting things at work today? And the word order in that sentence is correct, is right, because the place is mentioned first and the time or the date, day comes afterwards. And the sixth sen sentence, at the top of the page, please write your name. Yes, you can have a sentence where at the top of the page can be at the beginning of the sentence. Now we look at adverbs with the, with the verb. There are some adverbs like always, also, probably that are generally put in the middle of a sentence. Mind you, middle I said. This happens when the verb is a one word. Sometimes verbs are made up of two words and sometimes w verbs are made of just a single word such as the word fall, such as the word uh, verb goes. For example, Huma always goes to work by bus, right? Goes is generally put in the middle of the sentence. If she was feeling very tired, she was also hungry. As I said earlier, also does not begin a sentence. Take a third example. Your bike is probably, your bike has probably been stolen. Now, at the beginning I said that uh, words like goes, always, uh, words like always, also, probably, they are generally put with the verb in the middle of a sentence. Now, always, often, also, they go before the verb have to. If you are using have to, then you will have to use these two adverbs before have to. Example, the students always have to wait a long time for their professor. Now over there you, you are using the phrase have to. So always will have to come before have to. But these very words, they can also come after the verb and which verbs are those? Those verbs are am, is, was, were. Example, I was feeling very tired. I was also hungry. And here the word also follows the verb after. Now, sometimes when a, a verb is composed of two or more words such as can remember, doesn't drive, has or have been eaten, the adverb is put after the first part of the verb. Now let me repeat, first we looked at verbs that were composed of just one word and we looked at different positions, sometimes they come before, sometimes they come after the verb. Now we are looking at verbs that are composed of two, two words and we noticed, uh, we will look at how these words are sometimes put after the first part of the verb. Uh, look at the table given on your screen and that shall illustrate what I have said. You will notice that there are two verbs marked over there, V1 and V2, that is verb 1 and verb 2. He can never remember my name. Now the verb over there is in two parts. The first part is can, the second part is remember. So this is just what I said that certain adverbs like never, usually, probably, definitely, they usually come after 
the first part of a verb which is a two word verb. It sounds a bit complicated but if you look at the table it will illustrate what I am saying. For instance, uh, if you have the verb do not smoke, now the verb is in two parts do, do, do not smoke. So, you will say I do not usually smoke and usually words like never, actually, definitely, probably they usually come after the first part of a two letter verb. Are you definitely resigning? Right? This is a question, the word order is slightly inverted, but even here you find that are the first part of the verb are resigning. The adverb definitely comes after the first part of the verb. Are you definitely resigning? In the same way, your bike has probably been stolen. Now, in negative sentences, probably goes before the negative. So, we have uh, sentences like, he probably will not see you, right? The negative is will not and probably the adverb comes before the negative or you can say that in another way, I will probably not see you, but mind you in both sentences probably comes before the negative. A short practice, in this uh, practice you have to decide whether the words that are underlined are in the correct order. I washed the clothes and also cooked dinner. Now, the word that is underlined is cook uh, also. You have to see whether also is in the right place. Yes, it is in the right place in the first sentence. Number two, those tourists over there probably are French is probably placed in the right position in sentence number two. No, it is not. Number three, my mother gets hardly ever angry is the verb, uh, the adverb hardly which is underlined, is it in the right place? Is it in the right position in that sentence? No, it is not. It should be my mother gets hardly ever gets angry. All right, number four. In that sentence is usually in the right position. I usually take a bath when I get home from work. Yes, it is right. Sentence number five. I usually am tired when I get home from work. Is it right or wrong? I leave it for you. Number six, I will probably not see you. Is probably in the right position or not? I leave it to you. Number seven, he will not probably meet you. Right or wrong? Wrong. Now, let us look at another group of words and their position in a sentence and the uh, words are still, yet, any more, any longer, no longer. Now, still is a very tricky word. It is used to say, the word still is used to say that a situation or action is continuing. Still is usually used in the middle of a sentence with the verb. Example, it is 11 p.m. and Sara is still working. Mind you, it comes in the middle. Are you still living in the same neighborhood, uh, neighbor, uh, neighborhood or locality or have you moved? Again, look at the position of the word still. Third example, do you still want to go to the post office or have you changed your mind? Now, as I said earlier, still is used to say that a situation or action is continuing. For instance, 11 p.m. 
and Sara is still working. The action of working continues. In the same way, do you still want to go to the post office or have you changed your mind? Right? In the same way, the word yet, yet is also a problem for learners of English, especially foreign learners of English. And yet is uh, used to ask if something has happened or when we say that something has not happened. Yet is used mainly in questions and negative sentences. And it is found at, usually found at the end of the sentence. A few examples to illustrate what I have said. Have you finished packing? Have you finished packing that suitcase yet? Mind you, look at the position of yet. It's at the end of the sentence. Have you finished packing that suitcase yet? It's 11 o'clock and the typist hasn't arrived yet. That is the correct position of the word yet, at the end of the sentence. And then, we are hungry. Is dinner ready yet? We are hungry. Is the lunch ready yet? Yet usually comes at the end of the sentence. Now, remember that yet is often used with the present perfect. Have you finished washing that dress yet? Again, the position of yet it remains the same. It comes at the end of the sentence, but it can also be used with the present perfect. Now, I would like you to compare uh, the words yet and still and their position in a number of sentences. The first one is, my brother lost his job last year and he is still unemployed. Notice, is still unemployed, comes after the v verb is. Look at the second one. My brother lost his job a year ago and hasn't found another job yet. Notice yet is again at the end of the sentence. Another example, is it still raining? Has it stopped raining yet? Now still is possible in negative sentences. For example, she said she would be here half an hour ago and she still hasn't come. She said she would be here half an hour ago and she still hasn't come. Now over there, she still hasn't come, it shows a stronger feeling of impatience as can be seen from the following sentences. When you say, she hasn't called me yet, you mean it is implied, but I expect she will soon. But when you say, she still hasn't called me, there is the implication that she should have called by now. So still shows a stronger impatience on the part of the speaker. Now let us look at words, uh, phrases like not anymore, not any longer and no longer. And we find that they are used to say that a situation has changed. And any more, any longer, they come at the end of a sentence. Example, Miss Meer doesn't work here anymore or any longer. Both are correct, but their position in the sentence is at the end. Another example, they were great friends, but they aren't friends anymore. Or, they were great friends once, but they aren't friends any longer. The position of any more and any longer is at the end of the sentence. But no longer can come in the middle of the sentence. For instance, they are no longer friends. He no longer lives with her. Fine, but no more cannot be used in this, this way. 
you can have he is no longer our employee that would be a correct sentence he is no longer our employee but not he is no more our employee right a short practice so that you know how these words are used a number of sentences are given you and uh, you change them using still and not anymore tony used to have long hair and a beard you change that sentence using the word still right and the hint there is a hint given you begin with still lo long hair and then continue you can write tony still has long hair but he doesn't have a beard anymore right the negative not anymore but anymore comes at the end of the sentence another example teddy used to play tennis and football teddy used to play tennis and football and change that sentence using still so you would say teddy still plays tennis but he doesn't play football anymore again the negative doesn't play football anymore third sentence mother was in hospital and she was in critical condition now the british do not use the word the with hospital so that is a british construction mother was in hospital the americans say mother was in the hospital so both are correct we don't have to fight about that mother was in hospital uh, you change that sentence and you can say mother is still in hospital but she isn't in con critical condition anymore right sentence number 4 i used to like kathy and karen change it and you can say i still like kathy but not karen anymore or you can change the either way you can say i still like karen and not kathy number 5 he was a good batsman and he was the best in the team change this and you can have he is still a good batsman but isn't the best in the team anymore and number 6 I was feeling depressed and homesick. You can change this by saying I'm still feeling depressed but not homesick anymore. Now we look at the fourth group of words and their position. The words are although, though, even though, in spite of, despite. Now, take the word although after all though use a subject plus verb and a verb example although he is fat he seems quite healthy now you've got although although must be followed by a subject and the subject is he and the verb is is although he is fat he seems quite healthy another sentence although it rained a lot we enjoyed our holidays although it rained a lot we enjoyed our holidays and although as i said is followed by a subject and a verb although it subject rained is the verb third example he didn't get the job although he had all the necessary qualifications although he had all the necessary qualifications and as i said although is followed by a subject he verb had although he had all the necessary qualifications now with the word uh, the phrase in spite of or despite uh, learners of english are often confused 
uh, in the use of in spite of and in the use of despite. Now, with these words a noun, a pronoun or an ing form is used after in spite of or despite. Example, in spite of the rain we enjoyed our holidays. In spite of the rain and that is the noun phrase in spite of is followed by the noun phrase the rain. Another sentence she is not tired in spite of working all day and in spite of as I said is followed by an ing form ing form of the verb in spite of working all day. Number three the word despite despite what she said I still think her work is worthless. Despite what she said I still think her work is worthless. Now make a note that in spite of in spite is followed by of but not despite you do not say despite of you can say in spite of, but you do not say despite of that would is totally wrong, totally unacceptable. Example, in spite of the fact that he had resigned, he completed his assignment, but you will not say despite of the fact that he had resigned, he completed his. You would say despite the fact that he smokes five cigarette packs packets a day he seems healthy despite does not take of. Now compare the use of although and in spite of or despite notice how they are used. Although it was raining since morning all the school kids arrived on time. The second one in spite of the traffic jam the guest arrived on time. I could not sleep although I was tired. I could not eat despite being hungry. Now let us look at the second part of these words which deals with though and although students do not know which one to use. Sometimes though is used instead of although. Now this happens more often uh, this happens more often in spoken English and though comes at the end of the sentence not although but though. For instance take this sentence the dress is not very nice I like the color though. You can use although and though, but with though you have to remember that it has to come at the end of the sentence. I meet her every day I have never spoken to her though right. Even though is also used and even though is a more emphatic form of although when you want to emphasize something you will say even though I do not really like her I must say she is honest and in that sentence you are conveying in a very emphatic form that you do not like her but still you are giving her the credit that she is honest. Now a short practice to see how these words are used. There is a box given you in, uh, in front of you in the screen and you have got phrases like it was quite chilly, she had been rude to them, I had never seen my aunt, he holds an important office, 
he had promised to be on time. Now you complete sentences are given you, there are blanks over there and you complete them, them by using although or uh, although and a phrase from the box. Choose any one of the phrases from the box. Take the first one, although dash he is not paid well. So from uh, the phrases given in the box which one would be appropriate and over there it would be the phrase he holds an important office. Although he holds an, in, an important office, he is not paid well. And I hope you noticed that the word although comes at the beginning of the sentence. Number two, although and then recognized her from a photograph, very, very uh, easy. Although I had never seen my aunt, I recognized her from a photograph. Number three. She did not wear a shawl, although it was quite chilly. Again, in that phrase, although uh, the second half of that sentence, although is at the beginning, although it was quite chilly. Number four, they decided to invite her to the function, although she had been rude to them. And number five, they were late although they had promised to be on time. Another practice just to revise what you have done a short while ago, what you have learnt a short while ago. And you have to complete the sentences by using although or in spite of. And in the first sentence, what would you have? Of all, all my careful plans, a lot of things went wrong. So what would you have? You can't have although my all my careful plans. It has to be in spite of, in spite of all my care, uh, careful plans, a lot of things went wrong. Number two, we had planned everything carefully, many things went wrong. Same meaning, both sentences, sentence 1 and 2 have the same meanings, but notice that structure is different. One has taken in spite of, so this one is although, although we had planned everything very carefully, many things went wrong. Number 3, I love music, I can't sing. You can't have I love mis music in spite of I can't sing, it has to be uh, I love music although I can't sing. Number four, being very tired, we work till midnight. So that sentence can be completed by using the phrase in spite of, in spite of being very tired, we work till midnight. And number five, all the air conditioners were working, but the room was pretty warm. And you will have in spite of this. All the air conditioners were working, but in spite of this, the room was pretty warm. Now, another practice session, here you have to use the words that are given you in brackets and make sentences with those words that are given in brackets with though at the end. Take the first one. He is very nice and in the bracket it says do not like wife. So you can rewrite that sentence using the words given in the brackets and use though at the end. He is, he is very nice, full stop, I do not like his wife though. Number two, it is very warm, windy, it is very warm. It is windy though. Number three, we did not like the pudding and then you have the word it. We did not like the pudding, we ate it though. Now, we come to the fifth part of the lesson and that is the use of even. 
and this is this poses the greatest problem. Even is used to say that something is unusual or surprising. Example, her driving is not very good. Even I could drive better. Even, now over there, the speaker is expressing surprise and comparing that even I could drive better. Take another example. She always wears a shawl even in summer, which is surprising. It, the use of the word even shows an element of surprise of something being unusual. B, uh, the second part is that we very often use even, even is used with the verb in the middle of a sentence. You must remember the position where would even come and it is used with the verb and in the middle of a sentence. For example, she always wears a watch. She even wears it in bed, right? And it comes with the verb wears. She even wears it in bed. Another example, he is very rich. He even has his own private plane. And again, even over here is with the verb has, even has, even wears, right? Now, in English, you also have not even. Take this word. She has just climbed 10 flights of stairs and she is not even out of breath again showing an element of surprise. They are a very unfriendly lot. They did not even say hi, did not even. Another example, nobody lent him money, not even his best friend. Notice there is an element of surprise when you use not even. And again, even is often used uh, with the comparative form when you are comparing it with something. For instance, you say, it was very cold yesterday, but today it is even colder. When you use even, it is often used with the comparative form, cold, colder. It was hot yesterday. But today it is even hotter. I got up at 5 this morning, but mother got up even earlier. And again, notice it is the ER form, the comparative, not the superlative, the EST. That would be wrong. It is even always goes with the comparative, the ER situation. Another example, I was surprised to get a call from her. I was even more surprised when she appeared at my door the next day. Now over here, the ER comparative is not used. It is more surprised because surprise does not have the usual ER, EST forms. So, it is more surprised. Now, even is used with if, when and though. I will probably see you tomorrow, but even if I do not, we are sure to see each other before the end of the week. So, even is also used with if. It is also used with when. She is never loud even when she is angry. You can use even with though. She has bought a pressure cooker even though she cannot cook. So, notice how uh, 
the, the word even is used. It can be used with if, it can be used with when, it can be used with though. Now, a quick practice, practice, num, uh, practice 5 and you complete these sentences with even and a comparative form. I bought a cheap umbrella, but the one Julie bought was even cheaper. This house is 200 years old, but the mosque next to it is even older. Number three, the restaurant is always crowded, but today it's even more crowded. And the last one part is the use of as. You can use as to show time to me and as to show reason. It can refer to two things when you are talking about as referring to time. It can be used to refer to two things happening together or over the same period of time. Example, we watched her as she opened the parcel. You, as she is opening the parcel, we are talking in reference to time. She is opening the parcel, you are looking at her. We watched her as she, as she opened the parcel. As we walked along the street, we looked in the shop windows. Two things are happening at the same time. Third one, third example, turn off the fan as you go out please. What is happening over here? You are doing two things and as is used especially for two short actions which happen at the same time. Example, Hamid arrived as I left, that is he arrived and I left at the same time. Now, just as, you can also use the word just as together, which means exactly at the same moment. It is also very commonly used. And as is also used when two changes happen over the same period of time. Example, as the day wore on, the weather got worse. And with that, we come to the end of today's lesson, in which you looked at the use and position of certain problematic words. Allah Hafiz, see you next time.